Hi friends, host Derek here, talking to friends people. I've got a new spot to put the camera. And why? Because, well, it's not really perfect, but whatever. Damn it. It's better than it is now. Well, you're going to get the top of my head cut off, but whatever. Okay, so. Apparently, I'm back to making music videos in the car. Here's the thing. I've been making this channel, I've made videos for this channel for a good six years or so now, probably six years. And I've gone through stretches of time where I do different kinds of videos more often than others. Right now I'm doing a lot of live streaming, which is fun, rewarding, comfortable, not very much outcome oriented for the channel. These kind of videos, comfortable, what I've always, I always wanted the channel to provide for me, which is a, an outlet for, for talking about stuff basically, and for clearing my head of whatever's going on inside of it. Right now, what's going on inside of my head are a couple of, of kinds of things. So, my dad decided to get two months of residential care for my mom instead of one month. Which means she's going to be not my responsibility from January 15th to March 15th. And that's on my mind. You know, what am I going to do with that time? Uh, I want... There's a, there's a limited amount of choices you have to do with any given amount of time. It's a, it's a chunk of time that... Time is a resource that when directed to one thing, it cannot be... You can't permit, you know? To permute something in debate is to do both. So, if somebody says... Uh, I think we should give free milk to the kids in school. And somebody else... Can, can say, you know, it's a counter plan. No, we should give them free hash rounds instead. The affirmative who's advocating for free milk can permute, can say, do both. Let's give them free milk and hash rounds, and I still wait for them. Anyway, you can't permute time. You might be able to do both in the sense that, oh, I want to both go to the dinner at McDonald's and go to dinner at Burger King. But you can't do them both in the same chunk of time. Once a chunk of time is directed towards something, that's it. It's spent on that. And there's no recovering it. And there's no going back and using it for something else. So, we tend to operate at least metaphysical types like me tend to operate under the presumption that you have infinite amount of time. So I talked about it in another video, but I, I want to sort of recap things that are on my mind. And that's, this is one of the things on my mind, is that I've got a finite amount of time. I've got a limited number of opportunities to, for example, do things with my dad. So during this two-month period, I want to do things with my dad. I want, you know, what he mostly what he wants to do, whatever that is. Uh, I do want to try to incorporate him into my channel more. That would give me more of an opportunity to do so because it'll be more like, I mean, it'll be fr unframed without mom. Mom right now is framing everything for both of us. It's like, we both understand things through the schedule of taking care of mom. With more autonomy, uh, I suspect my dad and I can find a lot more common ground because it'll be more like, well, what do you what do you want to do, Dad? Do you want to do something today? <laughs> you know, that should be fun. I might suggest to him that we, he and I, go to Reno. You know, Rachel and I are going to go to Reno. Why don't Dad and I go to Reno? Be like, oh, that's a long drive. Fuck it, let's go. 
Yeah. I think I'd have fun hanging out with Dad over here. Anyhow, it gave us a chance to to engage with each other in a non-supervisor employee kind of relationship like we have now. Uh, at the moment, it's very much like he's on my ass all the time about, you know. It's like if I'm five minutes late going into the house to put her in the bathroom, he's already trying to get her out. There's no not on schedule for him. It's like... If I say 8 o'clock, I, I better be there at 8 o'clock or he's going to try to start without me. Anyhow, that's one sort of thing that's on my mind is the dynamics of my family, which it's a very interesting experience when you come back home and start living at home again. After living independently, raising a family, all that kind of stuff, um, being out of the house for about 25 years, come back and... Uh, you know, it's, it's the same and it's different. Uh, obviously, it's different because mom's not the same at all. But, same house, same vibe, same ESTJ frames. <laughs> Don't crash, Eric. Try not to crash, if possible. Uh, Alright, so what else is on my mind? Well... Obviously, Rachel's on my mind. Being in this long-distance relationship is... It's an interesting thing. Uh, Long-distance long distance relationships and FI polar people are definitely not made for each other. In, in theory, you know? Like... Most... In most incarnations of a long-distance relationship, I would not be able to work in it at all because I just wouldn't feel secure enough in the relationship. In this relationship, I do feel secure enough. Rachel does a good job of being all in, which is what I need from a partner, and being a good teammate, which is what I need from a partner. And so I'm fine with this long-distance relationship. The only... Uh, the only problem that I have with it is one of concern for her. Like, I am very capable of sort of backburnering the relationship and her until I see her again. You know, <laughs> so and obviously that's not gonna that's not gonna do. Uh, and we do stay in contact constantly, but. You know, as an FI poor person, I have a tendency to pay attention to what's in front of me and to not miss people. Uh, I do miss Rachel, but uh, I'm not spending a lot of my energy on missing Rachel. Uh, I'm directing my energy elsewhere, obviously, and my attention elsewhere. Uh, so, I worry that she's going to feel like um, I'm losing interest or becoming more distant from her when in reality it's just I'm distracted you know I do want to always it's important to me to touch base every day a couple times a day but I'm kind of selfish about my FI in the sense that if, if I don't feel like I need FI attention uh, I won't I won't really be proactively considerate of my partner if she doesn't alert me to the fact that she needs FI attention. So, you know, one nice thing about being with Rachel is throughout this process of being separated from one another, we will periodically make videos together. And uh, probably we'll do more work together apart than we would together because uh, when we were living in close quarters, well, I guess we made a fair amount of videos together, like live streams and stuff. But I don't know. It's like I need I need a lot of isolation time to work on certain things that I would like to collaborate with her on. What I mentioned before is 
type house, a reality show idea, fake reality show idea. Um, so let's transition now to other things on my mind. So the other thing on my mind a lot is the presidency, the presidential run, politics, and stuff like that. It's a daunting thought. Um, like anybody, I have a succession of moods, and sometimes I feel more. Oh, sometimes I feel a lot more up to the challenge of things in life than others. Like today, I'm feeling kind of schlumpy. Uh, I didn't sleep well last night. I lay in bed a long time. You know, I stayed in bed the appropriate number of hours, but I tossed and turned. I was restless. And, uh... I woke up this morning feeling restless, too. I guess the thing is, one thing I, I think is more important than I've realized, it sort of struck me that maybe this is significant, is the way that taking care of my mom requires me to constantly keep an eye on the clock. Like, okay, I got two hours, so I gotta go back in and, yeah. Um, and what I really like in life are stretches of the time where I don't have to look at the clock. At this point, I'm so habituated to looking at the clock because I know I've always got something coming up that it's making me stressed out. Uh, first world problems, obviously. Most people have to look at the clock all the time. But it's an adjustment for me. And also, dealing with my dad is an adjustment for me. Uh, I'm not used to having to defer to anybody. I'm not, I'm not used to being anything but the dominant male in a situation. And I'm definitely not the dominant male at my dad's house. He is the dominant male. Although, you know, not, not oppressively so. Like... We have good boundaries in our family. All of us do. So, um, anyway, the presidency is one that, one of the topics in my head that makes me sigh a lot because I see how it is. I see how everybody is about politics. You know, it's like Tim Blanchard, I think his name is. He likes me. He wants to vote for me. And so, he says, secretly I'm progressive. Because he still wants his group to win. It's like, that's the challenge they're going to deal with. It is is getting across to people the fact that they should support me even though I'm not part of their group. And that if they think the fact that they support me makes me part of their group, they're wrong. But they should still support me. Because their group thing is what's the problem. So, you know, we're, I'm, I'm trying to fight that. I'm trying to fight this thing where see, where one side gets to prove that they were right the whole time. And see, it was those evil bands who, who were the problem. I'm trying to put an end to that shit. It's stupid. There's no reason for that nonsense. Um, I you know, I, I did appreciate, however, his questions last night regarding specific concerns of his, like... Would I put uh, corporate stooges at the head of the agencies that regulate their area of corporations? Of course not. I am pro-business, pro-corporation, I guess you'd say, but I'm mostly about respecting the checks and balances implicit in a sound democratic system. And I'm mostly about Restoring some professionalism and dignity 
to the government, to the office of the presidency, etc. So, there may be some onerous regulations that we ought to get rid of. But, there are plenty of regulations that are appropriate. And, um, certainly regulatory agencies in charge of those regulations, it is very much appropriate that they uh, not be in the pocket of the industry that they're supposedly regulating. I understand the reasoning behind that sort of thing. It's like, hey, look, the only people who really know what kind of regulations are onerous and which kind are appropriate are somebody who's got an end in the industry in some fashion. But uh, at the end of the day, to the extent that Congress signed those regulations into law, it's the president's job to enforce them. And as a general matter, of course, I do not want conflict of interest to seep into uh, the office of the presidency at all. He asked me if I would allow, if I'd be comfortable with my daughter receiving a job from a corporation that she didn't really deserve because, you know, I'm trying to curry favor with her. Like, no, I wouldn't be okay with that. I believe in avoiding even the appearance of impropriety. It, I, at the same time, it should be stated that I am definitely going to take corporate money as campaign donations, and there are lots of corporations who should donate to me because I already and firmly am in their camp on certain issues. So, it's like... I gave an example in the live stream of legalized online poker. I don't believe and agree that with the the federal the federal anti online poker law is unconstitutional. The federal government has no business at all legislating that. None. Zero. Makes no sense. It's ridiculous. Um so I want that law stricken. I'm going to try to do it through the Justice Department, case law, that kind of thing. If not, I'd like to get Congress to repeal it, if I can. So what's the takeaway from this? The takeaway from this is, if you are a corporation who wants to do online poker, it would make sense to give money to me. I am opposed to carbon taxes. Um, a lot of people say, Climate change is the biggest problem in, in the world's history, and we've got to, to tackle it together, and we have to reduce emissions and all that kind of stuff. I call complete bullshit on this idea. It may be true that climate change is the biggest problem in history that we have to deal with. That doesn't mean we have to curtail emissions. It just doesn't. Maybe we have to do a better job of uh, processing them as they come out. Maybe we have to do a better job of collecting them once they come out. Maybe we have to do a better job of sequestering carbon in general. Maybe we have to find some other solution for to provide us additional energy sources that don't. Maybe all of those things. But at the end of the day, we cannot even conceivably consider curbing emissions while concurrently thinking this is wise. The reason is GDP growth is tied at almost perfect correlation to um, growth in energy consumption. In other words, it requires energy for us to do anything productive. And we want to keep those energy costs as low as possible. Any kind of increase on energy costs is incredibly regressive. People who can least afford it are always the poorest people. So if you're a progressive, you don't want to increase the cost of energy, which is what carbon cur carbon uh, taxes and other emission curbing measures do. Um, the first analogy as to why we don't want to do this is right now we have got a shit ton of people who are making the following argument, crazy though it might sound. This, this city has gotten too big. We are overwhelmed by all the poop and pee that people are making. And and it stinks around here. I am the politician that will save the day. I am here to advocate for measures to make people poop and pee less. 
crazy, right? Of course it is. You don't make people poop and pee less. You deal with the poop and pee better. Same thing with emissions. Any unilateral curtailing of emissions by the United States puts us at an economic disadvantage against places like China and India, which will ramp up production accordingly and make the same shit much more dirtily. So, we have to be intelligent. Yes, climate change is a problem. Curtailing emissions is not the solution. And if you think it is, nobody should vote for you. 